Will you choose the red pill and learn a potentially unsettling or life-changing truth? Or will you choose the blue pill and remain contented in ordinary reality? AI editing isn't actually as bad as that. It's here to help us speed up our editing workflow. AI is here and it's here to stay. We now have to embrace it and see how we can use it. And in some of this video, hopefully there's going to be some tips and I'm not going to say tricks, it's just stuff that I have picked up while using it over the past few weeks. Uh, there's plenty of videos online. Pick up as much information as you can and utilise that and learn it. I'm looking forward to the full version when that's released just to see exactly what it can do. And as a, a an educator as well, I'm looking forward to introducing this into the classroom next year because it's really going to speed up the students' workflow and provide them with more tools in their arsenal to create the images that they want to create. I'm not going to waffle on. I'm just going to let you see what I've been doing with it so far and a couple of things that I've picked up along the way. So let's dive right in. Lots of tips and tricks on the internet at the moment regarding generative fill AI and a lot of hype about it. Will it change photography? No. Will it change editing? Yes. It's simply there to help and speed up your workflow. And so far, everything that I've tried with it, I have found it to be very, very useful at speeding up the workflow. Even this image here, although it's a composite, it worked and produced the results that I was after really, really quickly. I also went back into traditional methods as well to do some of the elements within this. And for example, the necklace that I'm about to put on here that you can see in the screen, it produced results that I was more than happy with to get these. Now, it was the first one I went with, although you can regenerate as many different results as you wish. The other thing that it does, you, you know already, is the fact that it creates a mask as well. So I could go back in and edit, in this case, the neck, just to bring it back out, just to see the original image that was there. I took this image further and used traditional methods to finish it off, removed other areas, added new areas in, and this is the final image that I will be printing onto a textured paper and then adding the gold leaf. Another new feature is the remove tool and the remove tool works very very well and it's very quick at removing cleanly parts of your image. Now you have a couple of choices to use it. You can uncheck the box, which is remove after each stroke, use all the areas that you want to remove and then hit return and it will remove them. Or you can check that box again and each after each stroke, it will remove any elements you want. And you can see it's quite clean and it is very intuitive with it. As you'll see here, just when we take some of this away, just decrease the brush size so that it's reading some of the elements right beside where I want to remove. And you see how clean that is. Now I'm zoomed in here at over 300%. So I tried it in the smoke as well, just to see what it would do. Final results with this tool are fantastic. Another thing that I would recommend doing to make it even better is when something goes wrong for you or you don't like the results, to fill out the form that's available when you are doing it. If you just right click on it and it rates your results and you provide Adobe with the information of what's went wrong in your opinion and I'm sure that they are reading everything to make this the best it can be. As the AI draws information from your entire image, sometimes you don't get the results that you are after, such as in this case, because it's drawing from the background as well. One way to get around this is turn off a layer that you don't want the information drawn from, and what it does is it produces and adds on to where your selection is. Once I've done this, I normally rasterize my layers once I'm happy and settled with the result. 
Even though AI assists and speeds up your workflow tremendously, you still have to use traditional methods if you're doing composites or anything like that. So you're not losing your skill base at all because AI is being introduced. It's simply there to speed up your workflow. One thing to consider if you're working an entire image without closing off layers is to work close to the edge of what you want it to merge and give the AI more information of the background. The results it will yield will be better and cleaner. Another thing to do is when using a rectangle to extend your canvas is to use it and set it to a fixed width and height and I used 1024 for this because I think that's what the recommended one was for the beta. The results you get with this will be more detailed and a better resolution. As you know, Photoshop is also a design package as well, not just for photography. And one of the new things, one of the new features it has is the Gradient Live Preview. Now, I find this very useful, again, when it comes to uh, composites, but also just using this example here is just to show you how it actually works. And you can see the live preview as you're making it. You can change the colors at any point by right clicking on your color and change that at any point at all and update it. You can also increase or decrease the effect of the feather and where the feather lies on it. Another thing that you can do as well is you can go back to traditional methods and change the colors that way. You can also add, as you would expect with a gradient tool, any other colors that you want into your gradient. This is really handy and again, effectively quick. This is our back garden the other day there after cutting the grass, but it wasn't really because this is the back garden. And it was just one of the things that I thought I could try generative fill with, just in, in the garden design type of scenario. And it's, it's one of the things that I think it would be very useful for as well. In this case, I threw in the dogs wouldn't sit for a photograph, so I just created a few dogs in here just to make it seem homely. One of the things it doesn't do so well at the moment, but remembering this is the beta, and also remembering this is a flat image, I created asked it to create a trellis my thought was it would know what I meant by a trellis. And it did, but it also at the same time, it used the angles within the image and the light within the image. So for things like this, yes, you're still gonna have to drop in elements that aren't in the same direction or elements that you want to be in a different perspective from the image. But everything it did, it turned out great. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully there's a, just a couple of wee tips in there that perhaps will help you on your way. I'm really looking forward to the full version because if this is what it can do in the beta version, I, I just can't imagine what the full version is going to do. I'm sure the resolution will be better, but at the moment there is a fix for that. The 102, 1082 pixel rectangle will fill the spaces and it provides a really good quality. Other times, depending on what the image is picking up from, sometimes the quality isn't that good, but it's a great starting point. It really is a good starting point for your images, uh, for your photography, or in this case, most of the images uh, in this video from the composites. Could you do a complete composite from the start with it? Yes, you could, but for me, I still like my traditional methods and I'll still employ all my traditional methods for it. 
this is just going to help me speed up the workflow when creating them. Hope you enjoyed what you saw and I hope you're excited for the full version whenever that is expected. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.